Hello and welcome to my lecture on selecting a fingerstyle ukulele or a fingerstyle ukulele buyer's guide. Now, first of all, I want to talk about what is fingerstyle ukulele. It has to do with plucking individual strings with your right hand finger rather than strumming like people typically do on a ukulele or a guitar. It's akin to playing classical guitar as opposed to strumming a guitar. Rather than strumming the ukulele, you pick individual strings to play a melody and accompaniment. As a result of that, playing fingerstyle ukulele is a little more sophisticated than just strumming. It's a little more complicated and it's a little more difficult. As a result, I want to get you into the right ukulele so that the task of playing fingerstyle ukulele becomes easier. Now, let's begin with looking at why I love to play ukulele and why you may want to choose ukulele as well. First of all, it's pronounced ukulele, if you pronounce it correctly. I'm going to continue to call it the ukulele because that's what most people are familiar with, and that's the way that I pronounce it anyway. But if you want to be correct and be, be prepared to be corrected by people that are Hawaiian or know something about the ukulele, and will they will correct you. First of all, I like to play ukulele because it's small and it's light and it's portable. I started playing ukulele, and then I went back and I decided, well, let's try this guitar. And the guitar was big. I had to wrap my arm around this big body. It was heavy. I kept knocking the neck and the headstock into things as I sat at my computer trying to play music online. And the thing was heavy. I, I picked up, I also play accordion. I picked up, I have a small accordion, but it was still really heavy because I got used to the small, light feel of the ukulele. The ukulele is also extremely portable. Unlike a piano or something else, you can take it anywhere. The other thing I love about the ukulele, four strings. And when you wrap your thumb around the back of the neck, you got four fingers to play with. Somehow that math makes sense to me. Rather than having four fingers and trying to play six strings on a guitar or a classical guitar, you only have four strings to play. Now it's somewhat limiting in what you can play, but I like that mapping of a finger per string. And finally, a ukulele, like a classical guitar, has nylon strings as opposed to steel strings. They're really friendly to your fingers. They don't put big gouges. They don't have, um, they're not wire wound, so they don't have ridges in the strings. So if you slide, you don't dig grooves or, or tear up your fingers. So the ukulele, small, light, portable, four strings so it's easier to play and nylon strings. It's a fun, portable, uh, fun to play, feels good to play instrument. So I encourage you to play ukulele and specifically finger style ukulele. Now, this is an obligatory slide. Every introductory ukulele uh, lesson begins with the anatomy of the ukulele, okay? So we have the body here. That's the big box that makes the sound. And out of the body, through the sound hole, comes the sound. The strings are attached to the bridge down on the body, and they string up and go across the nut to the tuning knobs and the pe or the tuning pegs and the knobs that tune each string to the correct tuning. Now they run across the neck where you have frets and the strings, and you press down just behind a fret to play a particular note. Now again, they run over the net, over the nut to the tuning pegs that are attached to the tuning knobs on the headstock. So that's your quick anatomy of a ukulele. If I use any of these terms, you should now know what I'm talking about. Now I want to get into the meat of this particular lecture by talking about types and sizes of ukuleles. The most common is probably the soprano. This is what you're used to. Now the soprano is only 21 inches long and only has 12 frets, so it's very limited. You primarily use it for strumming. 
I consider it to be more or less a toy. It's probably appropriate for kids, but it's hard to get your fingers into the frets, especially if you move up as you move up the fretboard for adults who play a soprano ukulele. Now, the other option that you've got is to move up in size. And the next size up is a concert ukulele. It's 23 inches. And notice they managed to stuff seven more frets in there. So you've gone from 12 frets to 19 frets and so more playing area. You may also be able to tell on this picture, maybe not, that there's more area between the frets. There's more distance, so it's easier to fit your fingers in the frets than on a soprano. But why stop there? The next size up is the tenor ukulele. It's another three inches longer. Same number of frets, but the frets are even further apart, which makes it really comfortable to play. Now, they're not so far apart as like a bass or a guitar. They're still pretty close together. So you can really span your hand over a bunch of frets easily on a ukulele. Next up from that is the baritone ukulele. Now, this I don't really consider to be a ukulele. Unlike ukulele tuning, like the other three ukuleles we just discussed, the baritone is tuned to the bottom four strings of a guitar, so it has completely different tuning. I consider it to be a small, limited guitar. Up from that is the U-bass, or I guess sideways from that, actually, because it's the same length, it's 30 inches long, but it is actually tuned as a bass, so it's tuned to the top four strings of a guitar but down an octave. So it has a good thumping sound. In fact, it comes, mine came with these big rubber strings on them. They're actually polyurethane or something, but they feel like big rubber strings and they thunk, thunk, thunk. So you can use this to play bass music. I consider it to be pretty much just a, a small acoustic bass. Now, these things are typically electric and you could plug them in, but you can also play them acoustically without the electric power. Now, this is a lot of ukuleles to choose from, and it's one of the reasons that I created this lecture, is to winnow down this range. Let's begin that process with the baritone ukulele. It's tuned more or less like a guitar. It's not a ukulele in my mind. You have to have completely different ukulele music books if you buy them for baritone ukulele, and they're very limited. It's not a real popular instrument. So I'm gonna eliminate that right away. The next is the U bass or ukulele bass. Now this is just like a bass guitar. And if you wanna play it, go learn bass guitar and pick up a U bass. I'm not particularly interested. It's fun to play, I have one, but it's not a ukulele in my mind. Now let's look at the three that are left, the actual ukuleles that are tuned to ukulele type tuning. First, I would eliminate the soprano. It's very small. It doesn't put out a lot of sound, and you primarily strum on it. It's kind of a toy in my mind. And you need to move up to size so that you can fit more frets and get bigger distance between the frets so you can fit your fingers on the fingerboard. So you'd move up to a concert, but why stop there? The concert is limited too, as far as distance between the frets. So I like playing a tenor ukulele, especially for finger style ukulele. So we've just eliminated several options and simplified our choices. If you want to play finger style ukulele, I recommend getting a tenor ukulele. Now, of course, the best way to get a ukulele is to find one. So play whatever you can find, but if you're going to purchase one or you're targeting your search, target it on a tenor 26-inch ukulele. Now, we finally decided on the ukulele we're going to get, right? There's no more options. Unfortunately or fortunately, there are lots of options. What about carbon fiber? This is like an advanced plastic from uh, the aerospace industry that they're making ukuleles out of now. And uh, they're really nice ukuleles. What about an electric ukulele? Now, the problem with the electric is that 
it uses steel strings, and usually it's going to do low G tuning that we're going to talk about eventually. So it's a non-standard tuning. Or a banjo lele, would you believe it? A combination banjo with ukul four ukulele strings on it, or even a double neck ukulele. Here you've got an eight string ukulele where they double up the strings per string connected to a four string ukulele. Now the problems with these is carbon fibers, they're nice, I don't own one. That's because they cost about $400 a pop. This particular Lava U ukulele costs $399. An electric ukulele, as I said, steel strings. It gets away one of the things I love about ukulele, and that's the nylon, nice feeling strings. Banjolele is kind of too exotic, and so is a double neck. I am somewhat tempted by an eight string ukulele because they sound really mellow. It's just like a 12 string guitar for a ukulele, but once again, very expensive, going up to $500, $600. So really all of these options are just distractions. If you wanna play a ukulele, you just need a basic ukulele. Now with that said, I wanna talk about the features in a ukulele that actually matter. The first that I really like is having an acoustic electric ukulele, not because, it, by the way, it comes with a guitar plug, a guitar cord plug in the body that you can plug into an amp and you could play it just like a guitar. It's got a, a Pezio uh, microphone built into the body so it picks up the sound and turns it into guitar cable signals. This particular example even has a uh, preamp in it and sometimes it will do that so it takes a battery that you've got to plug into your ukulele but what i really like about it i never play plugged in i find that i can produce enough sound for myself or a small group without plugging in but it has a tuner so with this option you have a built-in tuner in your ukulele now if you don't go with this option then you have a clip-on tuner and you're going to lose it and it's going to move around this tuner you will never lose. It will move with your ukulele. So I recommend looking into an acoustic electric ukulele. The next thing is gloss versus satin finish. Now this is no big deal, but it is to me. I like satin finishes. They're kind of a matte finish as opposed to a high shiny urethane type finish. I don't like shiny plasticky guitars. I like to feel the wood and get that satin feel of a, a gloss, or not a gloss, but a, a, a matte finish to my ukuleles. And all of these that you're seeing here are satin finish ukuleles. The next thing is to look for decent strings. Most ukuleles are going to come with decent strings. It's a cheap thing to put on to make your ukulele playable. And it may be the most important feature of a ukulele. These have Aquila strings, which are nice strings, nylon strings, and look for decent strings on your ukulele. The other thing that I like is a strap nut, primarily down at the butt end of the body, because I like to play with a strap. Whether I'm sitting or standing, I like to play with a strap because it holds the ukulele in against my body. I learned this from a classical guitar teacher who always played with a strap. And it was so that you could get the instrument secure against your body. I can take my arms away and the ukulele stays there. If you don't have a strap, then you need to pin the ukulele against your body with your elbow and your, your forearm. And I find that I just don't like it. I like having a secure instrument in my lap and you definitely need one standing up. Well, actually you can still pin it under your arm standing up, but I find that very awkward. So get a ukulele with strap nuts. Now I actually don't use the strap nut up on the neck. I usually unscrew that. It's down near the body on the neck. I usually use a string and tie it around up just beyond the nut on the bridge stock because I like a little bit more room under the strap. But we'll talk about straps before the end of this lecture. So that's it. We figured out the ukulele that we need, right? 
wrong. There's one more important option that you need to know about, and that is ukulele tuning. It turns out that this top low string here on a standard ukulele is not the lowest string. Now, if you play a guitar from the top string to the bottom string, from string six to one, the strings go up in value for each string. They go up in tone. That's not true of a standard tuned ukulele. ukulele. In fact, the G string that I'm pointing to right there, the top string, is actually higher than the two strings down from it. So it goes high, low, a little higher, and then very high, which is higher than the G string. So it's known as high G tuning or standard tuning, because this is the way that most ukuleles are tuned, or C tuning, because without pressing any of the frets, you're pretty close to a C uh, chord. It's also referred to as inverted tuning because the high string, the top string, the low string, actually tunes into the other strings. You might also see it as AEC with a small G, meaning a high G, or the small G first. This is what you want. This is what most music books are about. This is what most people play. The other option is a low G tuning. What you need is a different string, so you need to restring the G string, and then you tune it an octave down. Now, why do people do low G tuning, especially with fingerstyle ukulele? It's because of the limited range that you get with standard tuning. Think about this, the G is up higher than the C and the E. So what do you have is a range of C to A. What is that? It's about 12 notes or so. If you go low G, then you've got G to A tuning. That's over an octave of range that you can pick up. So to get expanded range, people tune the G to a low G, especially for finger style. The problem is, is that it's not as popular, there aren't as many books, and it's non-standard. So I don't teach it either. I don't play it. So what you want to do is when you're picking up books and so on, look at this where it says for low G ukulele. If you're going to follow along with me, you don't want a low G tuned ukulele and you don't want low G tuning books. And with that, I'm finally done with the features of a ukulele. So what I want to do is I want to make a ukulele recommendation. And that is that you get yourself an inexpensive, I call it cheap, my brother keeps correcting me. He was in the sales business. He says, don't use cheap, use inexpensive. So you want an inexpensive ukulele. And the one that I love is this Donner. It's an electric ukulele with a built-in tuner. It's a tenor and it's only $81. Now I picked mine up on sale for $54. And because it was so inexpensive, I bought two tenors and one and one concert. So I actually have eight ukuleles, one of them being a U bass. And three of them are these tenor, are these Donners. Actually, all of them are Donners, except for I have one Cordoba. Now, what do you get with this particular for your $81? You get a tenor size ukulele, check, in standard tuning, check with a keyless strings, nice, a built-in tuner. Now, of course, it also has a preamp and a guitar plug, so you can play it plugged into an amp. A carrying case that's pretty nice. A strap nut, which I like because I don't have to put strap nuts on my, start drilling holes in my ukulele and putting in strap nuts. And a thing called an armrest. Notice on the body of the ukulele, you'll see that little black strip at the edge on the left. What they've done is they ground down the edge of the ukulele where your arm usually rests when you're playing over the sound hole, and it kind of doesn't dent into your arm as much. It's smoother and it's, and it's really nice. I really like that feature. I haven't seen this on a lot of ukuleles. Now, what do you also get with a cheap ukulele? Unfortunately, 
the ends of the frets are very rough. They didn't sand them down very well or grind them down. So you end up roughing up your hands. Now, you can get around this. I've got a metal nail file, and I went in on my frets, and I, and I filed them down. Be sure you don't mess up your uh, the uh, neck of the guitar, scrape it up with the file, but you can smooth out the frets yourself. Fairly poor electronics. It's just a Pezio mic, uh, and it's good enough to tune your ukulele, which is primarily what I use it for, and a cheap strap. I don't like the strap at all, so I replace it. And speaking of replacing the strap, we're not done. I want to talk with you about ukulele accessories, the first one being the strap. Now, I really like these cloud music straps, especially the ones you can see that this strap is just a single piece of material. The design goes through from the, be from the front to the back. The fancier ones have two pieces of material kind of sewn together at the edge and they, they pucker and stuff. I don't like that. So go after this particular strap I like where you don't have two sides sewn together to the strap. And it's got nice uh, leather ends to it. It's got a string, which I tie around the headstock up near the nut. And I, I attach the other end to the strap nut down in the body. And it's only $14. I recommend that you get one and play with a strap to hold the ukulele securely in your lap, even if you're sitting down. The other thing that I like is having a stand. And I used to buy cheap stands they were two pieces of wood that kind of slipped together. And they were unstable on carpet. They'd fall over and beating up your ukulele. What I started doing is buying these Donner guitar stands. They're much more stable. They're a little more expensive, They're three times more expensive. But they will hold your ukulele. Your ukulele, the top of the body, will just barely make it up to those rubber pads up at the top. So it's a, a little tall for a ukulele, but it still works great and it's very stable. And that's what I use. So that's it for the ukulele and the accessories. So what does it all come out to? Well, your tenor ukulele, I'd recommend that you buy something, yeah, you know, in the $60 to $80 range. Make sure it's tenor and it has all those requirements, you know, a strap nut and built-in tuner and so on. It's nice that the Donner comes with a case. So if you do go portable, that you have something to carry it around in. Get a ukulele strap and make sure it's a ukulele strap. Don't get a guitar strap, it'll be too long. And yeah, you can shorten it up, but you're gonna have all kinds of excess strap that gets in the way. Ukulele straps are shorter, they're made for ukuleles, so get one of those. And a decent stand, actually I use a guitar stand but get a stand for your instrument so it doesn't fall over. And you're gonna be in the range of about $125, which isn't bad for getting yourself a new instrument. Now, of course, the best way to get a ukulele is to find one. So go to friends and family and see what they've got laying around in the closet. You're probably gonna find a lot of soprano ukuleles. That's for kind of the, the novice. The experts get tenor ukuleles, which is what you want, and they're usually not willing to give them up, so you're going to have a harder time finding that. And with that said, this has been Selecting a Fingerstyle Ukulele, a Fingerstyle Ukulele Buyer's Guide. Go get yourself a ukulele.